Pledge. Hello, everyone. Can we have as many people come to the stage as possible? We want tens of thousands of people in this photograph. This is a message to the rest of the world. So can you all come to the stage, please? So everybody on the sides, people in the sports hub particularly, this is so relevant for you. Can you please come down to the stage? Can we have people from the women's hub, from the youth hub, please come to the stage? I want you all to take a look around you. Just take one, 10 seconds and have a quick look around you at this. Right? Sometimes we don't realize just how lucky we are. Right? We can come out here, we can express freely who we are, we can express freely who we love and not face the persecution and torture that our friends and our allies and our comrades around the world face. It is so important to remember that while Russia is in the spotlight for the Sochi Olympics, there continues to be widespread abuse discrimination and injustice suffered by LGBTQ people around the world. So while the eyes are on the world, of the world are on Sochi, there's significant opportunity for all of our communities to come together and create this platform to send a message and a very important message to Putin and the Russian government. So while Sochi and Russia are in the news at the minute, what we need to remember is that there are 78 countries, at least 78 countries around the world, where something like this would only be in their wildest dreams. And that's why we unite here today and say we're here with you in spirit. Some of those other things that we do need to point out and I'm going to pause here and ask everybody who's still up the back to come to the stage, please. We want as many people at the front of the stage to send a message to the world. Can you please come down to the stage? So just to touch on a couple of those other things, because it's not just Sashi and it's not just Russia. New legislation enacted in Nigeria last month effectively criminalizes the lives of LGBTQI people and could result in imprisonment solely for a person's actual or imputed sexual orientation, you only have to look gay. People could face charges of consensual sexual relations in private. Advocacy of LGBTQI rights or public expression of their sexual orientation or gender identity. This is just not on, people. Just a week ago, India's Supreme Court reinstated a law which bans carnal acts against the order of nature. What the hell does that mean anyway? This is a significant setback for LGBTQI people in India and perhaps most dangerously it has caused a re-energization of radical right-wing fringe uh, um, activities in countries staging anti-homosexual marches, calls for the death penalty, those sorts of things we just can't comprehend. So I to ask you again, take a look around you, take a look around you. Right. I'm actually starting to get a little bit emotional here. <laughs> there continues to be abuses inflicted against LGBTQI people in Iran. I have Iranian friends here, and it's horrific what happens in that country too. Gay men are punished for being gay. They're hung in the streets for everyone to watch and spectate and ridicule. Saudi, uh, in Saudi Arabia, Arabia, sodomy is also punishable by death. We need to keep working together. We need to show the world that we mean business, that Sydney will not sit by and watch the rest of the world destroy and kill and murder and abuse and hurt other people around the world. So take a look around you. Look around you, look what we've got, look at how lucky we are, and look at the message that we can send to Russia, to Nigeria, to India, to Saudi Arabia, to Iran. Right? This is really important, people, 
and we are going to make a big statement that will go global in the press in the morning. That's all I have to say, and thank you so much for everyone coming down to the front of the stage. I would like more, so please, people, can you come to the stage? Can you come to the stage now? We're about to take this photograph. It's really important. Maybe have you all cheered down here? Maybe they'll all come down. <laughs> This is absolutely amazing. I would like to introduce to you this wonderful man beside me. This is Barry Taylor. And Barry is from the Gay and Lesbian International Sports Association, who have come up with this wonderful idea and really asked for our help and support when we had this number of people in the one location on one day. Take a look around us, it's a beautiful day, we've got beautiful people and we're going to send a very beautiful message to our friends in Russia. Thank you! Wow. Part of the tradition of LGBTI sports yeah. all around the world is the sense of inclusion. For many, they have been excluded or suffered intolerance or bigotry within their sporting codes. But we have come together and we have an amazing tradition. And as a part of that tradition, we come together at different Olympics and Commonwealth Games and we have what is called a Pride House, where we celebrate LGBTQ athletes who are within the Games, but also to highlight the, the no to prejudice within sport for LGBT people. Well, guess what? We weren't allowed to have a Pride House in Russia. But we weren't defeated because all around the world we are having remote Pride Houses and this Fair Day is a remote Fair Day Pride March! So rather than division, one of the things that we celebrate in LGBTI sport is inclusion. And this is a big year for LGBT sport around the world. Two of those events are happening here in Australia. In Darwin in May, we have the third Asia Pacific Out Games of people from Asia Pacific coming together. In Cleveland, we have the night Gay Games, we had them here in Sydney in 2001, two, and we're gonna have them in Cleveland. And then of course, another exciting event here in Sydney, the Bingham Cup, where the rugby players of the world are gonna come together. We are inclusive, we bring people together. And as we have already shown, what the two most powerful experiences at the World Out Games in Antwerp last year was when the Russian team marched past in the march past. That was amazing. The second part was important at the World Human Rights Conference. We need to be aware where we hear from people from Nigeria, from Russia, where people were hunted from their villages and had to walk 300 kilometers because their boyfriend had just been shot by other villagers and they had to run and, and walk 300 miles and now asylum seekers. We have many gay asylum seekers here in Australia. We need to hear their call also. And so this is our chance to say, we want this to be the world largest photo that's going to be part of the international uh, campaign where we all hold hands in love and support for our LGBTQ brothers and sisters in Russia. Let's hold hands. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna manage this process, but before we do that, and I know it's getting hot, can we have one last call for people to come down to the stage? Help me out here. Come, come, 
Come, come, come, come, come, come. So just before we actually do this and we take this photograph, we have one other very special person that I'd like to introduce you to. So, and it's very important because it's our Olympic athlete, Jai Wallace. Thank you everybody and you are making the world proud today. Just on a personal note, Russia's ridiculous laws would make athletes like myself, Matthew Mitchum, Natalie Cook, uh, all the gay athletes that have been representing Australia around the world very proudly, winning medals for Australia, we would be afraid to play our sport. We would be afraid to make you proud. We would be persecuted to make you proud, our own country. Can I get one massive cheer for Australia's only gay Winter Olympian, currently sticking it to the Russians, Bell Brockhoff! So what we want you to do is put your hands in the air and hold hands with the person either side of you and connect up. That's it, get the hands high in the air. Are we ready? One, two, three. amazing part in our parade where we actually even put out a very another very strong message to so come and see that what's also important is that our objects are that we support people and people's rights in Australia but also globally the only way we do that is by you coming to our events and coming to our party and helping us raise those funds to actually get messages out to do something like this you will be the front page of the newspapers tomorrow morning Sydney be very proud of it Beautiful. I